Worldview and Writing Arguments. In this lecture, I'll be defining worldview, examining worldview elements, and looking at their effect on argumentation. What do you see when you look at the classic image on this slide? Does the young woman appear? How about the old crone? With a bit of effort, are you able to see both? What about the images on the previous slide? The paintings of Octavio Ocampo are filled with hidden images, some of which are easy to see and others which are so subtle we may need a guide to point them out. The way that each of us perceives the world is a bit like that. Each of us sees what may or may not really be there. Some are able to understand more than others. Some never move beyond one view. The sum of what we believe about the world and everything in it is our world view. According to Ken Funk, a professor at Oregon State, a worldview is a set of beliefs about fundamental aspects of reality that ground and influence all one's perceiving, thinking, knowing, and doing. Notice the capital R of reality. We sometimes see a similar capitalization of truth being compared to truth. In both cases, this is the author's way of showing the difference between the ultimate factual concept and the still in flux concept that may change over time. For instance, at the beginning of our nation, the Constitution defined a slave as three fifths of a free person. Even though that was truth as perceived by the framers of the Constitution, we, being of a different time and place, would argue that the truth is each person is as valuable as another and that slavery is wrong. According to Funk, there are several elements that contribute to an individual's worldview. These include epistemology, beliefs about the nature and sources of knowledge, metaphysics, beliefs about the ultimate nature of reality, cosmology, beliefs about the origins and nature of the universe, life, and especially humans, teleology, beliefs about the meaning and purpose of the universe, its inanimate elements, and its inhabitants. Theology, beliefs about the existence and nature of God. Anthropology, beliefs about the nature and purpose of humans in general and oneself in particular. Axiology, beliefs about the nature of value, what is good and bad, what is right and wrong. But how do we come by these beliefs? In a word, experience. In every encounter with another person, group, or idea, the way we view the world in general is altered. If one grows up in a home of supportive faith, one is likely to hold to that belief system as an adult. If one grows up under abuse or oppression, one's view of the world may reflect the lack of hope that is often part of those conditions. But even the best and worst experiences can be mitigated by later ones. Everything we learn and everything with whom we come in contact, parents, siblings, friends, acquaintances, colleagues, communities of shared interest, teachers, and on and on, has an effect on what we are willing to accept as real or true and how we act upon our beliefs. Even this class will have some effect on the way you think and perceive the world in the future. When you look at the grid, it should only take a moment or two for the dots at the intersections to begin changing color. They don't actually change. All of the intersection dots are white. However, our eyes see dots changing from white to black and back over and over. The slightest movement of an eye contributes to the effect of this optical illusion. With the slight alteration of perspective, our vision interprets a wholly different reality. Now imagine this grid as a large object with you on the left and someone else on the right. If you were asked to make a case for which dot shifts first, your assertion would be different than the other person's. And because none of the dots actually changes color, you would both be wrong to claim that a specific one changed first. 
It is the perception and misinterpretation that causes the brain to believe a shift has happened. And yet, because we actually see the shift take place, we are willing to argue that it happens. We have proof because we see the change with our own eyes. A worldview functions a bit like this. Our brains interpret a vast array of experiences and create a way of thinking about the world. Each new experience is interpreted and tucked away to become another nuance in the way we see it. Raymond Towler was recently released, Raymond Towler was recently released after spending 28 years in prison for a rape he did not commit. His view of the justice system is likely to be radically different from that of Adam Walsh, whose son was murdered. As you prepare an academic argument, you will be doing research on your subject. Your worldview will affect what you are willing to accept as evidence. If you are concerned about climate change, you probably wouldn't have much problem with using Al Gore as an authority. If you are not concerned about climate change, you might find Gore an unacceptable spokesperson. As you prepare to write, you may want to hold to your preferred position regardless of what facts might get in the way. We all do that from time to time. And you may make claims that cannot be supported sufficiently, but still believe the claim is enough to make it so. Again, we all do that from time to time. However, as idea explorers, each of us must be very aware of our personal biases that may prevent us from getting closer to reality with a capital R or truth with a capital T. Thank you.